I'm Don Welch, Director of New Business Development for MTI Instruments. We're going to talk about the Proforma 300i, which is a system that's used to measure conductive wafers, silicon wafers or wafers like gallium, and uh, there are others, uh, indium phosphide. If the doping is low enough and the resistance is low enough, the system as is will measure these conductive wafers. In another video, we're going to talk about how to measure wafers that have high bulk resistivity. So, today we're looking at, um, we're going to look at a, a couple of things that this instrument can do. And it can do thickness of wafers, it can do total thickness variation, or TTV, uh, it can also measure bow, and the one important thing I need to point out is that uh, the wafers, the maximum gap of the standard instrument is 1.2 millimeters, uh, but we do have an extended range of 1.7 millimeters that can be ordered optionally uh, in case you have thicker wafers. Next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to turn the instrument on and let it warm up, and while it warms up, we're going to talk about some of the some of the built-in features. So we turn it on. And in order to get good stable readings, you want to let this instrument warm up for about 30 minutes. Uh, the amplifiers need to thermally stabilize inside. We do have a little fan for cooling, but for the best results, always turn this on 30 minutes before you start your readings. It's okay to leave it on all the time also. Uh, as we look at the instrument here, we'll see that we have a keyboard that's used uh, for manual, manually uh, setting up the instrument, changing modes of operations, doing calibrations, uh, and, and several other features that we'll go into. We also have a display. This is a numeric display, and we can read the thickness of the wafers, either microns or uh, thousandths of an inch or mils, if you will. Some of the other attributes we have here is the top deck. This is where we're going to place our wafers, and we can either slide the wafers right on this Teflon-coated deck, or we can use a, a wafer ring. These are also sold by MTI. They have a little Teflon disc on the bottom. That allows us to slide wafers around and not scratch the deck or the wafer uh, sliding around the Teflon deck. This is pretty slippery and smooth. Um, however, it's, if you have uh, very sensitive wafers, it's best to always make your measurements with a wafer ring. We also have pins on here, uh, and the pins allow us to set a fixed distance so that when we measure the wafer, we always measure right to the center. We also have a bowl level that's built into the top deck, this, the Teflon deck here. And what we can do is level up the deck by adjusting these, these two adjustments here. There's two feet that are on the bottom, and by raising and lowering these, we can get all the tilt out and get the uh, top deck centered. And the reason we do that is so that when you first place the wafer down, you, uh, you might have an air bearing situation going on, and you don't want the wafer to shoot off the side, and you also want to reduce uh, any residual stresses on the top deck that may create strain that might affect your reading uh, by, say, a quarter micron or so. All right, the next thing we want to uh, move into here, after you've turned your instrument on and warmed it up, you want to go through a calibration procedure. And the reason you do that is to make sure that the wafers that you subsequent wafers that you're going to measure are, have been calibrated to the gap of the two probes in here. Now as time goes on, and due to temperature changes, the gap in here can change ever so slightly. And since we're interested in, in measuring things uh, down to a quarter of a micron, uh, 10 degrees temperature change or 5 degrees temperature change can, can affect that. And I'm talking about room temperature changes. After our instrument has warmed up, we're going to go through a, a calibration procedure. And you can do that either with Cal Standard, a silicon wafer, a conductive wafer of known thickness. This happens to be an MTI calibration standard where the center of the wafer is a known measured calibrated thickness. Alternately, you can also use gauge blocks, all right? And the gauge blocks are uh, certified thicknesses. Today we're going to use the uh, Cal standard that we have, which is a wafer of uh, center thickness of 529 microns. So we're going to place that in between the probes, get it centered. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to switch to, uh, in the main menu mode to calibrate. Okay, and now we're into the uh, calibration mode of the instrument. So what we want to do here is set the same number that we have on the calibration standard. So we're teaching the instrument the, the thickness of this wafer here. And so we're going to select the 5, 
a two, and a nine. Decimal points in the correct spot, and we're going to change this 873 over here to 0 0.20. So, two. zero and zero here. Then we hit um, enter. Okay, we've keyed in the calibration factor, which is the center point thickness on this silicon wafer right here. And now we're going to actually calibrate the instrument to the calibration standard, which requires that we select menu, go back into calibration mode, and we hit that once and then twice. And we're reading the same as our cal standard, 529.8. Two, zero. All right, now we're ready to measure other wafers. So we're going to take our Cal standard out. And next we'll measure a 200 millimeter wafer. We have a 200 millimeter wafer ring that we're using here. All right, and what I should do is put the pins in to center this, but for brevity here, we're just going to look at the, the center here. And we can see that this one is 728.15 microns. Uh, one of the other things we can do if we want to record the center point reading of these, of this, we also have a feature here. If we put a thumb drive in, and we've set this up to export our data to a, a USB thumb drive in the setup menu. All we have to do is hit uh, the save command here, and you can see saving data. So if I wanted to uh, measure, say, you know, 300 wafers, every time I measure a wafer, I press the save, and then it gets written to the thumb drive, so we have a record of that. Additionally, on the back, we have an Ethernet interface, and that Ethernet interface will allow us to communicate over a network. Uh, or with another computer and also store that data and we can remotely control the Proforma 300i via that network uh, for a little bit of automation here. We'll save that for another video. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to measure uh, total thickness variation. So I'm going to take the thumb drive out. We'll stick with the same wafer here. Alright, so we're going to menu, and the next thing we're going to do is select mode, and we're going to do five point. So ideally what we do is we would set the pins, but just to show you quickly how we work this, is we're going to look at five points around, around the uh, wafer, and we're going to save these, and then it'll calculate the total thickness. So on the, I'm on the first point right now, so we just hit select to measure it. All right, now we're going to go to point two. Let's go over here. Now we go to point three, which is over here. Point four, make it down there. Okay, next we select to view uh, statistics, all right? So we can see our total thickness variation was 0.7 microns. We see our minimum, 727, and we also have our maximum, which is 728. Deviation was, standard deviation is, is 0.3 microns. Next, we're going to set up to do bow measurements. So we go in our menu, mode, we select bow measurements. Have to use a wafer ring for this, and we have a 200 millimeter wafer set in the bow ring. I'm sliding it into the center point. We hit enter to measure side one. Then I'm going to flip the wafer. I'm also being careful to keep the notch oriented the same. Slide this back in. And then we take our second measurement. So, 
The bow here is 3.95 microns, and that's how much the wafer is uh, flexing due to gravity from one side to the other. That's how you do bow measure. The Proforma 300i can also measure semi-insulating or semi-conducting materials such as gallium arsenide, high bulk resistivity, uh, indium gallium phosphide, and other such exotic uh, materials. In order to do that, what we have to do is take off this nose piece right here. There's a Phillips screw, and then we use an Allen wrench, and what we're going to do is we're going to rotate the probe 180 degrees. And you have to do that carefully so you don't break the wires. Once you've done that, you're going to gap the probes, and one of the ways we gap the probe, we set it back up for 1.2 millimeters, and you can use a gauge block to do that. It's something uh, where you can slide in there, you bring your probe down so it's touching, uh, and then you start to tighten it up. You pull out your uh, gauge block or whatever you have to set your height, and then finish tightening this up and put the nose piece back on, and then we'll come back and we'll do a calibration of the system for gallium arsenide. All right, so before we were measuring a silicon wafer, and we can see that uh, we can measure the thickness of it, but we couldn't measure the thickness of a gallium arsenide wafer with the uh, orientation of the probes that we have. So we've rotated the probe, and we've regapped it for 1.2 millimeters. Uh, that's between the upper and lower probe. And now we see that we're getting a reading with this probe configuration. So in order to make measurements, we have to recalibrate the 300i uh, with a piece of your process, uh, either a piece or a whole wafer of your gallium arsenide wafer or other uh, high bulk resistivity wafer. So the way we, we do that is we either have a standard that we know the thickness or we get a micrometer and we measure a sample, okay, in this case we're seeing 625 microns. Alright, we slide that under here, we go back and we do a quick calibration and 625 microns, so we change that to 6, 2, 5, and we get a zero in there, 625 microns, enter. All right, so now we're reading 625 microns. We'll take a quick look at the other side of this sample that is broken off, and we can see that we're reading 600 and oh, it's 24 microns. Okay, so it's the sister piece, same process, so they should read the same. And that's how you would set up to do a calibration uh, with a insulating wafer. Now, the interesting thing is you can also still measure silicon wafers with this orientation. Uh, but what I want to show you is if I take the, the wafers out, and the reason we don't usually set our 300i up this way is you get a false reading even when there's nothing in the gap. And that's because of the, it, the uh, we still have the dielectric constant of the air in there, and it acts kind of like high bulk resistivity wafers where you're actually trying to make a measurement still. And this is false, so you just have to ignore this when the wafer's not in there. But when the wafer's in there, we do get the correct reading. Uh, the other thing we can also do with high bulk resistivity wafers, we cannot measure bow because you're not measuring to the surface anymore, you're actually measuring through the wafer. But you can still get TTV. Uh, measurements from your wafers by setting up for TTV as we showed previously in the video and that still works. Uh, what we can also do if we want to go back we could put a silicon wafer back in the gap okay and I can calibrate to this also. This one was 529.2 microns So all I would have to do is go back and, and put, um, redo a calibration with the 529 like you saw me just do. And this will work for silicon wafers too, fine. And you don't need to recalibrate uh, for any other conductive wafers. One calibration on a low conductivity wafer is good. But with high bulk resistivity wafers, if the process changes or you're measuring uh, a different bulk resistivity or a different process, you do need to calibrate on a known wafer standard whereas you don't with silicon. But, again, you have to keep in mind that when you don't have anything in the gap, you're going to be getting this false reading. So the only downside to this is you've got to just learn to ignore the reading. You don't get the three dashes that nothing's in the gap anymore. Thank you.